Uh, today is the sixth day of Ramadan. Just one week ago, we were wondering how will it be when Ramadan comes? Will Ramadan be a blessing for us or will it be difficult for us? This was only a few days ago. Now, Alhamdulillah, today we are feeling the blessing of Ramadan. I'm sure many of us who are anticipating a difficult Ramadan, now we are finding that Ramadan is much easier than we had anticipated before. And we should know that this month of Ramadan is a blessing. This month of Ramadan should never be looked upon as a curse or anything which is negative. Ramadan should be looked upon as a period when we rejuvenate ourselves, a period when we reconnect with Islam. If you look at the traffic on Preston Street, if you look at the traffic in the car park, if you look at the brothers assembled here today, we know that the attendance is far higher now. Why? Because people they are coming back to Islam. The challenge now is that when we come back to Islam, how many of us will stay? Will stay within the confines of the Sharia? How many of us will carry on coming to the Salat of Jumu'ah early? How many of us will carry on coming to Jumu'ah every single week? This is the challenge. Ramadan should not be a temporary phenomenon. Rather, it should be something which is a springboard for change, something which changes our lives, something which enables us to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we should feel privileged to be fasting in Ramadan. If you imagine how many people have died in the last year, in Bradford alone 400 Muslims die every single year, which means approximately one every day. One every day. So 400 Muslims, they are not fasting this Ramadan. And they would have given the whole earth to have been where we are today. So say Alhamdulillah that we are here in Ramadan. And inshallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive our sins as a result of this month of Ramadan. The early Muslims, they would look forward to Ramadan. They would say Allahumma dhalihna Ramadan. They would want to be fasting for Ramadan. If we look today in the news, we see in China that Muslims, they are being prevented from fasting in Ramadan. That there are 10 million Muslims in the northwest of China. And uh, edict, a government decree has been issued that nobody is allowed to fast in Ramadan. And they have said that they will conduct searches in people's homes to find out whether people they are breaking fast. And similarly, they will hold celebrations of the Communist Party and they will forcefully make Muslims participate in these celebrations so that they eat, eat from these free meals. So look, as Alhamdulillah, we are fortunate to be able to fast Ramadan. There are other people who are being forced not to fast Ramadan. So Alhamdulillah, we can fast in Ramadan. This call for Ramadan was made 1,400 years ago. In the famous ayah in the Quran, in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ya ayuha al-ladheena amanu, kutiba alaykum wa siyam, kama kutiba ala al-ladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattakoo, la uyuhu believe. But this is only a call for the believers. It's a call for those people who have some iman in their hearts. Unfortunately, we find many Muslims who they, they pretend they are fasting and they are not fasting. Because they are unable to fast, this is the lack of Iman. This is a call to the people of Iman. Ya ayuhal ladheena amanu. Kutiba alaykum wa siyam kama kutiba ala ladheena min qablikum. The fasting is for you as it was to those before you. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is consoling us. That yes, fasting by its very, very nature is something which is physically demanding when you abstain from food and drink for so many hours continuously. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala consoles us that previous nations, they fasted as well. And as we have mentioned before, the fasting which was present in the Sharia of all the Anbiya, all the Prophets, they preached fasting, although the specific details, they may have differed. Again, I came across in the news that in London there is one Jewish rabbi, and he is fasting Ramadan. Why would a Jewish rabbi fast Ramadan? He is doing it out of interface to try to bring Jews closer to Muslims. And it was interesting to read his comments about Ramadan. He said that he found the first two or three days of Ramadan very, very difficult. And this is the point, that when you have Iman, when you have belief that you are doing it for a specific reason, for a purpose, then you can do it. So he said he was finding Ramadan very, very difficult. Another side point is that he also mentioned that the Jews, they also fast on, hold, on their holy days like Yom Kippur, which is their most holy day, and other days they also fast. And this there is witness to the truthfulness of the statement that fasting is prescribed for you as it is prescribed to the nations before you. And the Jews, they do intermittent fasting, they fast some days, but they don't have an entire month of fasting. Also worthy of mention is that it would not be permissible for a Muslim to fast a day which the Jews have specified as a day of fasting, because this would be imitating the non-Muslims in their matters of ibadah. So this Jew, he has done this for his own 
uh, reasons or publicity or whatever his reasons might must be. However, the bad news for him is that without Iman, all actions are null and void. Regardless of how perfect his fasting is, the fasting is not acceptable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if he fasted the entire, his entire life. So this was a call 1,400 years ago to the people of Iman and from the second year of Hijri, the Prophet ﷺ commanded the Muslims to fast and the Prophet ﷺ he fasted for nine for Ramadan before he met Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala In today's khutbah I wanted to re-energize us by reminding us of some of the famous hadith regarding fasting They are very very well known, however it's important that we remind ourselves why we are fasting The most profound hadith about fasting is the hadith Qudsi, which is a hadith, a sacred hadith which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says Kullu amalim ni adam lahu illa siyam fa innahu li wa ana ajzi bih that every action of the son of Adam it is for him apart from the fasting it is for me not that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in need of the fasting he is not in any need of any fasting However, what the meaning of the hadith is, is that this action is sincerely done by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The whole of Islam is based on sincerity, on sincerity in following the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We all claim to be sincere in the actions we do. Uh, fasting is one of the most sincere forms of worship. Why? In fact, it is the most form sincere form of worship. The simple reason being because nobody knows who is fasting. Who knows who is fasting in this room? And the answer is that nobody knows who is fasting apart from you and apart from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so it must be for the sake of Allah because nobody else knows this so Allah ta'ala says every action of the son of Adam which is for him apart from fasting which is sincerely for him uh, for Allah and I will give reward for this and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said as siyamu jumna meaning that the fasting is a shield on the day of judgment from the hellfire and another hadith the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said and the person who fasts a day in the way of Allah, then Allah will distance his face from the hellfire by a distance of 70 years. So all of these hadith, brothers and sisters, they should make us feel strong that this hadith, that this uh, fasting, is something which is positive for us and not something which should be perceived as negative. Also the Prophet ﷺ, he told us that paradise has eight gates and then only one of those gates, and he revealed the name of one of those gates. And we all know the door of fasting, for those people who excel in fasting, this is the door of ar -Rayyan. And this is the only door of paradise which has been specified by name. Also of interest is that the month of Ramadan is the only month which has been mentioned in the Quran by name. Uh, we know there are 12 months in the Islamic calendar, but only one month has been mentioned by name in the Quran, and this is Ramadan. And only one gate of paradise has been mentioned by name, and this is the door of ar -Rayyan. Also on the hadith regarding the excellence of fasting is that the smell of the mouth of a fasting person usually you can tell someone is fasting from their breath the smell of the mouth of a fasting person is more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the smell of mist this is not to say we should not try to remove this smell from the sunnah to use the miswa to remove the smell however the smell it emanates from the stomach and this is beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because this is a byproduct the byproduct of something which is related to Allah and this is worship. Similar to this is the blood from the wound of a martyr. This is related to Allah. The smell of this is sweeter than the smell of milk because this is something which is related to Allah and came about as a result of worship. Similarly, standing on the day of Arafah. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he boasts the angels and my slaves, they have come to me dusty and disheveled. Normally this is dislike to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that somebody should be unclean however in this situation it is beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it was a byproduct of a worship so similarly the bad breath is a byproduct of worship so this is even the smell is beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala another hadith regarding fasting is the hadith of intercession and the hadith of intercession intercession is well known in the Muslim land if anyone has any problem in most of the Muslim countries they go looking for someone to speak to the person who is causing the problem, this is known as shafa'ah. So on the day of judgment, who will provide shafa'ah for you? Who will intercede for you? And the uh, Prophet uh, said that the fasting in the Quran, they will intercede for the fasting person on the day of judgment. So the fasting will come and say, Ya Allah, this person, he fasted for your sake, so forgive him. So this is something we should energize him. We should motivate it, we should rejuvenate our Iman that this fasting will benefit us on the day of judgment. 
we should also know that this fasting it has unlimited reward. Normally in Islam the multiplier for a good deed is between 10 and 700 times. However, the fasting is encompassing a very, very heavy form of sabr. You have to be patient in fasting. All of us, we are feeling hungry. All of us wish we could eat and drink. However, this patience, for the sake of Allah, this makes it easy for us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in the Quran, إِنَّ لَا يُوَفَّ الصَّابِرُونَ أَجْرَهُمْ لِغَيْرِ حِسَابِ That those who display patience, then their reward will be unlimited. So all of these hadith, brothers and sisters, they should make us feel strong about fasting and grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He has made this fasting a means for our salvation. All Muslims know that fasting is one of the five pillars of Islam. And we should know that the five pillars of Islam, they test our metal, they test our strength in worshipping Allah. We find that the five pillars of Islam, one is the shahada. The shahada is a statement and it tests it all through your life. Then we find the prayer. The prayer is a test of physical endurance. We find the fasting is a test of physical endurance. We find that the money, uh, the, the zakat is a test of how much we love the money. And the hajj is a test of physical endurance and the money. So it's, it's, it's combined between money and physical endurance. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the five pillars like this? Because to test Muslims in different circumstances. Some people they find it very easy to fast and to offer the prayer. They find it impossible to give away one pound in sadaqah. On the, in the, the convert, some people they find it easy to give one pound in sadaqah, but they find it impossible to fast and to pray. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing us under different conditions to see who is sincere to la ilaha illallah Muhammad rasulullah. So the sincere person is the one who excels in all five pillars. As for picking and choosing what forms of worship you want to do, then this is okay in the voluntary action. As for the fara'i, as for the obligatory actions of prayer, no Muslim has a choice over the five prayers. No Muslim has a choice over the, the 30 days or 29 days of fasting. No Muslim has a choice whether he should give away 2.5% of his wealth in zakat. No Muslim has a choice who is able to do so in offering the hajj. So all of these, these are tests from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to see who is sincere to him. So in the first khutbah we mentioned that this fasting is a blessing. We mentioned many of the hadith regarding fasting and we should feel happy that we are Muslim and we will feel happy on the day of judgment. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salam wa ala rasulil kareem amma ba'd One hadith I forgot to mention which is a hadith which only children they understand this hadith No adult can understand the hadith unless they cast their minds back to their childhood and that hadith is that the fasting person has two joys the fasting person feels two joys the first joy is the time he breaks his ifsar and the second joy is when he meets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala why does he feel joy when he breaks his iftar? Have you ever seen a child break their iftar? A child is so excited, counting the minutes, counting the seconds till touchdown, till takeoff. And this is the joy of the child. When the child puts the date in his mouth, this is the magical moment. And really, brothers and sisters, we should teach our young children to fast. This is not from mercy to, to leave your child not fast from the age of 14, 15, and then you find that the child is too scared of fasting. Well, the child needs to be brought up from the age of 7, 8, 9, 10. Slowly, slowly, a few fasts more every Ramadan until by the time they're 13, 14, they're keeping all the 30 fasts. And this hadith is only really understood by children. The joy of breaking the fast is at the moment of breaking the fast. The second joy, which inshallah we will all understand, is on the day of judgment. So what should we do on the day of fasting? What should we do? We should know, number one, that a day of fasting and a day of not fasting, they should not be the same. If the days are the same, then something has gone wrong. We should also know that every moment of the day and night of Ramadan is blessed. And we should try to fill our time with things which are useful, not just World Cup, as I mentioned in last week's khutbah, not just watching the Yorkshire Tour de France. These things they can be done in moderation. However, our focus should be on the Ramadan uh, World Cup. The most important things we should do in Ramadan is number one, as I already uh, mentioned before, is to be sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now one of the most important hadith regarding sincerity to Allah in fasting, the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Man sama Ramadan imanan wa ahtisaban, 
غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه من قام رمضان ايمانا واحتسابا غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه that whoever fasting with full iman his heart was brimming with iman and hoping for the reward from Allah غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه that his all his sins all his minor sins they will be forgiven Similarly, the one who stood at night in prayer. Yes, it's true, many of us were getting little sleep in Ramadan. You break the fast at 10 o'clock, and then after one hour, you have to go to Taraweeh. And then you go to sleep, and then there's only one hour, and then it's time for Suhoor. And then another three hours, it's time for work. The day is so compressed in Ramadan. However, all of it is Barakah, inshallah. If we're patient for 30 days, then inshallah, we will be the winner. The most important thing is the sincerity, that we try to make this action sincerely for the sake of Allah. Our intention is not to lose weight. Our intention is not to lose weight. Our intention is not to assert our identity that we're Pakistani or whatever nationality you might you may be. Our intention should not be that you feel left out and everybody else is fasting, so I will fast. Our intention should not be that you want to pass to stay in that iftar party and you feel bad if you didn't pass. Our intention should be, regardless of what people are doing around us, our intention should only be that it is for Allah and Allah alone. The second important thing in fasting, brothers and sisters, is that we should try to make sure we are doing the fasting correctly. There is no do Islam yourself, there is no DIY fasting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down the Quran. He sent our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to teach us how to fast. Prayer, fasting and hajj, these are all technical forms of worship. There are rules and regulations, there are do's and don'ts. All of us, we understand rules and regulations in everyday life. However, when it comes to fasting, many of us, we bend the rules and we use the statement, Allah will forgive. Allah will forgive. I did this, I did that. Allah will forgive. It's not as simple as that. Rather, you have to refer back to the teaching of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and find out if you need to do something to make up that day of fasting, if you make an excuse. Another benefit of seeking knowledge in fasting is that you multiply your fast. Everyone knows about bonus balls in National Lottery. There are many bonus balls in Ramadan. The bonus balls in Ramadan, they could include things like breaking your fast on time, doing it quickly. This is one of the bonus balls, which, by the way, I don't play National Lottery. Someone told me about it. Okay, so bonus ball in Ramadan is... Uh, sorry, I forgot my numbers. Uh, the bonus ball in Ramadan is breaking the, the fast quickly. Bonus ball in Ramadan is delaying the suhoor. Bonus ball in Ramadan is offering iftar to other people. All of these things we can do very, very easily. Where, where I live on the street, there are not many Muslim families. A few years ago, we started to take the iftar to a few Muslim households. Alhamdulillah, now, now we, we cover quite a few households. And the beauty of it is that that goodwill, it extends beyond Ramadan. Now all through the year, the neighbors, they bring food to us and we take food to them. So it strengthens the ties in the community. So try to feed people in Ramadan and there is much uh, khayr. Also from the important things of knowledge, having knowledge of Ramadan is knowing the things which reduce the reward of the fast. Everyone is overly focused on the things which break the fast. But there are certain things which reduce the reward of the fast. Two people who fast, their reward is not identical. Even though everyone appears to be fasting, everyone appears to be doing the same thing. However, the reward is not identical. One of those things which reduces the reward in the fasting is bad behavior, especially backbiting and lying and cheating, and all of those other things which all civilizations and all societies, they regard as evil actions. So staying away from these things is important all through the year, and especially in Ramadan. So first of all, sincerity, and secondly, have knowledge of those things which multiply your reward and protect your reward. Thirdly, the Qur'an. One Dawah organization, their motto is the Qur'an, the most read book. However, the motto should be corrected to, to read the Qur'an, the least understood book. Ramadan is the month of the Qur'an. Shah Ramadan al-Ladhi, unzila fihi al-Qur'an. The month of Ramadan is the month in which the Qur'an was revealed. How was it revealed? It was revealed that the whole Qur'an was with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Lord al-Mahfud, in the preserved tablet where Allah has written down everything. And then uh, in Laylat al-Qadr, the Qur'an is descending to the lowest heaven to a place called Bayt al-Izzah. And then over a period of 23 years, bit by bit, the Qur'an descended upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, starting uh, in Laylat al-Qadr as well. So Ramadan is a time to reconnect with the Qur'an. Our problem with the Qur'an all through the year is 
that we forget what the Quran is. The Quran is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we really internalize this meaning, then we would want to read the Quran again and again. However, we regard the Quran as a book like any other book, which is why we never connect with the Quran. It's very, very important, brothers and sisters, that we approach the Quran with the understanding that this is the word of the one who crea created the heavens and the earth, who created everything. The one who created us, the one who will return to. Once we internalize this idea, once we understand the significance of this, then we will reconnect with the Quran. To start with the Quran, in fact, with more, more of the Quran, Imam al Shafi'i, Rahimahullah, the famous Imam of the four Imam, he will complete the Quran 60 times in Ramadan. How is it possible? Only Allah knows. However, the point being, we should try to increase the recitation of the Quran. And more importantly, we should try to understand something of the Qur'an. People again, they overly focus with the recitation and the Tajweed and the Tartil and the Makharij. However, sometimes they forget that the Qur'an is not only there to be beautifully recited, the Qur'an is there to be understood, the Qur'an is there to reform, the Qur'an is there to produce a Qur'anic generation. So try to look at the translation of the Qur'an alongside your reading, reading the Qur'an. Very, very important that we reconnect with the Qur'an. Also from the important matters of Ramadan after sincerity and after uh, having knowledge and after connecting with the Qur'an is in Sadaqah. Sadaqah and Zakat, these are very very important matters. They have no direct connection with Ramadan. However, what we do know is that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the most generous person and he was like a fiery wind in Ramadan. He would run around doing even more generous acts. So many Muslims, they preserve their zakat for Ramadan and there is no harm in this, inshallah. It's very, very important, brothers and sisters, to discharge your responsibility of the zakat because that money does not belong to you, it belongs to the poor. Many of the ulama, they summarize the whole rulings of zakat into the statement that zakat is the right of the poor. It's the money which belongs to the poor. And inshallah, we'll give a separate khutbah in Ramadan about how to give uh, the zakat. So make sure you give your zakat and also try to give something additional to the zakat. Not only do the fal, but try to do some nawafin and some sunan on top and try to contribute to other, uh, other things as well. The final thing I wanted to mention about Ramadan in addition to sincerity in Quran and charity, I wanted to also mention the importance of da'wah, that we live in a non-Muslim land and very, very difficult times. Every time you open the news or your newspaper, nowadays it's very, very difficult to know which way to look. Times are hard and we need to still try our best to project a good image of Islam. If Islam is the true religion, whatever they say and whatever happens, Islam is still the truth. And when somebody asks you why you are not eating and drinking at work, then you should be proud. You should say, I am a Muslim, and Muslims fast in Ramadan, and we have been commanded to fast in Ramadan, as the other prophets, they were also commanded to fast. So we can say some small words, which they will strike the interest in people, like this uh, Jewish rabbi I mentioned, uh, who is fasting in Ramadan at the beginning of the khutbah. So we need to try our best brothers and sisters. Don't be a closet Muslim. Rather, be a Muslim who is proud of his faith. If somebody asks you about something, then tell them openly that we are fasting in Ramadan. Our Ramadan brings us closer to Allah. It helps us empathize with the poor and other positive messages. And finally, my message is that don't forget the children. You must protect your children, train them to fast, and tell them why they are fasting. Fasting is not just an exercise in just deprivation. Rather, fasting has a spiritual element. It's very, very important that we try to actualize the spirituality. So in conclusion, we say that Ramadan is here. Alhamdulillah, we are alive and kicking in Ramadan. And really, I'm feeling strong and I'm sure you're feeling strong. You're feeling weak a few days before Ramadan. But now we are feeling strong. And you're feeling the Iman in your heart, which is why this room is full. Which is why Christmas Street is full of cars. We are feeling strong. And let's not carry on strong, inshallah, for the next 20 plus days. And the final message is that Ramadan will be over in a few days and then we will forget about Ramadan. So make the most of Ramadan and try to strengthen your Islam. Try to strengthen your Islam and make the most and uh, don't let the days of Ramadan be wasted. Finally, ask Allah subhanahu wa to make it easy for the Muslims wherever they are and whatever situation they are in to accept the fasting of all the Muslims wherever they are and whatever situation they are in and to accept all our good deeds and make them uh, means for entering us in to everlasting life.